So I played around quite a bit with the lighting settings, and I did that for a while because I don't think it would be fun to watch me uh, choose really bad settings and then change my mind. So what I did here is I turned off the the scene lighting is not being used. So this should look kind of similar to the layout before. One thing you'll notice that halo that I put there is it's part of a scene lighting. And so it's not going to be displayed right now. You can kind of see the outline of that object. Uh, one thing I did to the geometry, I basically tripled the size of the arena. I moved these two uh, pickups further apart and this guy further away. And you'll see what I did with the lighting uh, as soon as I hit play. So first thing, I exploited the way the camera worked to kind of have it spring back to where we are. And that was, it enabled me to show the goal. And with the coroutine, I'll be able to slow the speed down so it actually takes some time to get it uh, all the way over here. The other thing is I have a <clears throat> turn down all the lighting. There's still a sun, but if you notice, the skybox is completely dark. So I basically took out the skybox, but you can still see the sun's putting some shadow. A little shadow right there. There's still some shadowing, a little shadow under both of these. Uh, if I turn that off, uh, it, things will be pitch black. I won't be able to see anything, and I'll show you in the environmental settings how I did all this. But what I want you to notice, I turned the speed of the camera movement down a little bit. I think I'm going to put it back up because it's a little bit annoying. If you move too quick, you get off uh, the spotlight. I like the lighting that I have on the left object more than the lighting that I have on the right object. And I'll show you how I created these uh, once we get out of here and back into edit mode. But there's a series limitation. The one on the left that I really like, it's actually floating above the ground in front of that uh, pickup. <clears throat> You'll see that spotlight doesn't move quick enough here. Um, so it's not bad right here. I'm also shining my spotlight on it. So I'm going to turn that spotlight off. I want to be able to see these uh, objects even when the spotlight's not, uh, you know, lighting them up. Let's put the spotlight on the main camera. And let's go back. There we go. Now you can see that it doesn't really. I have to bring that light that's on the other side. I have to bring it on the close side of the pickup on the right. So I have to move that light around. It looks fine when I'm on the lit side, but when I'm on the dark side, it's not so good. So I just need to have that light basically move. It needs to move every time the ball moves, so basically every update. It has to know the ball, and it has to know the position of the uh, pickup, and I'm basically going to position it in between the two, but very close to the pickup. So we're going to do that. I don't really like the uh, other lighting that I tried to move it above. It, I don't know, it's okay. It just doesn't really... I, I would need to enable the shadow as well. So I'm going to go with option on the left. All right, things I changed around, I told you what I did to the scene. Now for the actual lighting, you can see here in the lighting panel, Skybox material, I chose the default, and I just went to background right here, and it I, it's really bright in this room, but it appears either black or very dark, something, blue, but dark anyways, and flat. So I don't want the background to do any distracting. There's a tiny design on the floor. I'm okay with that. Let's look at the way I lit everything. I'm going to click back into this is scene lighting right here. The main camera is where I hit add component, light, and light right there. I did a spotlight. I have it right at the camera, so it's actually not aiming at the ball right now because what I did with the camera is I moved camera way over to here. So at the beginning of the game, basically you're looking at the end goal, and then what's going to happen is the camera is going to rubber band back to where the player is. I did this by moving the camera rig. Wow, this is a lot. Over 
there. All right. Get I'm gonna have a big view of that and zoom back to the black and white. All right. They would let me look at that while I'm moving the rig. Move it up a bit. Camera. Make it go hard. No. Actually, not bad. That'll be a good start. All right, and I'm going to turn that speed way down. Let's get crazy, 0 0.05, it's 20 times slower. I'm going to see where it really starts at. Oh, it's the clipping, that's why it looks horrible. You try to start it obnoxiously high up. Drop slowly. Pretty well. All right, so we'll bump that speed back to two. So I want to do 0.5 speed until it's close, and then um, I want to do two. I felt like was really good. So this will have a nice. Intro, transition, I could, I could go into the free look camera here. Basically all I need to do is adjust move speed. So if I make it public, I can adjust it from other places. I think that might be the most useful. Target position. All right. So we need to know when it's close to the player. All right. So we're going to unfortunately have to. I could either set a timer or I could check in the update. I hate to do it in the update. Let's set a timer. That's much better. So we're going to go with the pickup option. Did here timing run coroutine. Not what I think I wanted. There we go. All right, let's give it two seconds. I think that's a good amount of time. That code's not very hard to remember. I just, <laughs> I just didn't want to mess that up. I probably would have forgot. The yield is really what gets me on these. Um, I remember the return, but <clears throat> without the yield, these don't work. All right, so we're going to wait for two. I'm going to initially set the speed low. So here.
here's where I'm going to go. And set it to something uh, really slow for the first couple seconds. And then uh, when we run the coroutine, we're going to wait for two seconds. All right, we got a slight problem. We overwrote the move speed value. So all we're going to do is just make another move speed. Call this sub zero, and that's the initial. So that's the initial move speed is going to be that. All right, so we got initial move speed. We also need a current as well. Now, if we don't switch back and forth, we don't need a current. Make the code not feel very intuitive. All right, so I'm going to overwrite the move speed zero with uh, the other move speed, and that'll happen after two seconds. And what do we use? We've got to use move speed. I'm going to use the initial move speed here. Basically, we're using the initial move speed, and then we're overwriting that value with the other move speed. Uh, logically, I don't really like it, but it will, it should run. Uh, and I don't think we use move speed anywhere else. We got terms turn speed. I'm not worried about changing that. Yeah. That's all we got to change and. Now we've got no errors, so it should go half in for the first two seconds. Slow. Uh, hmm. Let's keep it slow right now. Oh, there we go. Two initial. Five. It'd be nice to see the uh, amount of time to move it for. Here, it needs to be a float as well. Let's call it slow move duration. Choose the reasonable. It can take a float, so we should be fine here. Now, how do we close? Slow move duration. All right. These uh, slider bars are really useful, and they're incredibly easy to set up. They do exactly what you think. There's really not much to say about them. They're a nice way to enforce something is positive. So I'm okay with zero. Maybe the max of 10 seems a little excessive. Maybe, well, you know, maybe somebody wants to move it really slow. It's going to take a little longer. All right. This will be the regular move speed, I think. Zero to 10 seems good. Zero, keep the move speed zero, though. All right, whatever. Initial move speed, let's uh, cap that at two. So this will throw those little slider bars all around. It should be set to the values that we currently have. All right, so I want this guy to be 0.5. Nope, just kidding, that's two. Initial, oh, it's third. All right, good enough. Over 
few seconds it goes slow, and then boom, fast. Now it doesn't have a smooth transition, but that's all right. I'm not into super smooth right now. Let's get this light, and you can't really see where uh, in the right position. And one thing that really annoyed me, I'd like the halo to shrink with the flash right there. All right, I need to close a lot of this down. We got some serious issues because I couldn't put the light inside the better pickup and all. And now, what I'm about to do. All right. The other thing I did, I turned off a mission right here and I turned some of the specular down and the smoothness way down because if I didn't do that, the ball would be painfully shiny, I thought. I didn't like that at all, so I wanted to like a more matte finish, so something down there. That worked better for me. Alright, let's get this uh, light to shrink with the power up. Let's go... Let's see if we can do that in the pickup script. Alright. On. Pick up. All right, so there's a light, uh, and I'm going to do something a little weird. I know that the light is in the same game object here, so I'm the child, but I'm going to search get opponents and children because uh, well, I'll just do get components for now. I'm just worried about how I'm going to link up these two a little bit later. So when we get hit, we're going to do this animation, but if I have a light, <coughs> I want the light, the light unfortunately doesn't shrink and grow with the, with the scale, and you can see that pretty easily. So in the end zone, I'm going to scale, and I'll scale everything, but you see the light, the box is changing, but the light's not changing at all, so, oh. Uh, the light didn't change, so it's independent of scale. The way you change the light is the range. So boom, bigger, smaller, etc. So I need to get to this range right here. So here's our animation. So I'm going to get the light right here. <coughs> And if I don't have a light, it's null. So I'm going to need to run uh, a test for that every single time, unfortunately. Uh, the other, you know, let's just start a second uh, coroutine. I think that would be better than trying to do two things with if statements in one coroutine. So I will do an if statement exactly once here. If we have a light, we'll run the light coroutine. Wow, this is definitely not where it should be. Um, nope, this is exactly where it should be. So regardless, I am going to very soon put a light on a pickup. So I don't want to tie it to either one of these right here. And if you're nervous about that there's no code here, don't be. That logic was handled in Player Manager. So we basically did all the pickup stuff there. Uh, called pickup hit, and then the only thing we really did to react was that code that we already wrote. So we don't need the any actual code for pickup here. So we're really just going to see if there's a light. We could go... 
not equal to no, but then they'll tell you, oh, you should just say if light. That works just the exact same. So we're going to call light timer. Of course, it doesn't exist, but it will in a second. All right, super similar to what I did here. They should run basically completely uh, in parallel. So what you wouldn't want to do is adjust something in one that you wanted to look at in the other. So even though the floats I and I, that's okay. They're local variables, so they're not going to conflict. But what I don't want to change around is transfer uh, transform local scale probably in both places and that's okay because what I'm gonna do is mess with that light that I have so here's the light up here I'm gonna use it in more places so all I need to do is declare the light up here and then I can access it in my light timer all right, let's see what lights are all about. I think it was intensity is what we wanted. And this is a float you can get and set. So I need to know the initial. So there's the initial intensity. I don't need to multiply by a unit vector because what we're going to be messing with is basically just a float. And messing with the intensity. Now, if you recall back when we looked at this, the I equaled frame count at the beginning, and we made all these floats, so it's basically acting like a percentage. So this is a number between zero and one. It starts at one, goes down to zero. So I'm going to take this percentage and multiply it by the initial intensity. So basically I'm using it to scale the initial intensity from its original value down to zero and we wait for a frame. And we're going to do pretty much the exact same stuff down here. Now I have an option. I could not call the intensity. Is that what I, oh geez. <laughs> All right, as I was saying, range is the value we want to mess around with. This is what intensity would do. Kind of cool, actually, but definitely not what I was thinking. Uh, it will make this really big, and just looking at the way that looks, maybe when it gets... That's a lot of math. I think maybe when the range is big, the intensity should be shrunk, but I don't know. Let's just mess with the intensity, or the, well, uh, range. So I'm assuming range works the exact same way. Yep, range of the light. There we go. This seems like it's going to be needed. Make sure my logic is solid. Everywhere else. I don't want to do this twice, so I'm going to. The light is kind of the optional animation. The one down here, animation, is the one that should get called no matter what. Yeah, right here. Guarantee we run animation. And then light timer, maybe, maybe not. So this light timer shouldn't do anything that's super important. That should be done in animation. The only thing that's, I would say super important is the set active to false. Uh, that needs to happen or else the object will still hang around. All right, I think we're ready to. Animation 
move over there. It kind of jumps at the end. Maybe I'll increase that uh, timer. <clears throat> the speed seems pretty good. So this should go small. All right. So the only problem was we exit level before we got to see the animation finish. That is easy to correct. That's in player manager. I don't think I made accessible. There we go. Let's call this exit timer. Should generate field. We'll just keep with the theme of this file. We're basically making all this stuff public here. Exit timer equals three. I'll just put that standard in there um, without putting the little slider on like we did before. All right. So after this, we're going to. Yeah, good enough. All right, let's get this light to move properly. Let's see a couple ways we can do this. I will make this light a child of better pickup. While we're messing with this pickup, let's just get that guy out. We can have extra junk. We've got a model and a light. I think it's going to orbit. So this light is a point light, so it doesn't really matter what direction it faces. So I don't really care about the it's the rotation of it, uh, but the position is super important. You can kind of see it's basically orbiting is what's happening. You can't see a light itself, but you can see the effect that it has kind of in some pattern kind of like this. It's going below the floor and then above it. Shadows are turned off, so it lights the cube when it's even below the floor. Watch it there. All right, so basically I'm going to have to change its position. And I want to change its position right before the scene is rendered. going to use sure I really want to. I'm going to need an update method right here so I don't have an update method in pickup so I'm not going to I'm not going to just throw one in here what I'm going to do is just add a new script want it to end up in this folder. So that's why it's here. Let's call it uh light positioner. Light fixer. Alright. Attach it to this light. What I want it to do is position the light between the player and or the ball and this pickup right here. So I'm going to get the uh, vector from the player uh, from the pickup to the player. It'll be player minus pickup. Get that vector, and then I'm going to normalize it. I'm going to need the player. <clears throat> So we're going to uh, get game object by type. Should have one. I'm tempted to use ball. I'm going to go with player manager, though. The reason I can go either way, because both of these scripts are attached, uh, what I really want is the transform of this. I'm not going to use. Well, maybe I will use some of the player manager stuff, but I don't think I'm going to. What I really need is the position the player has. So that's why I call this a transform. Now in update, I want my own transform to equal... Let's not try to do this to one huge leap. So I want to go from the 
this to the player, so it's player minus minus transform. Totally forgot to. We're doing the positions of these. I think of the transform itself as the position sometimes. All right, player dot position minus transform dot position, and this is the difference. Basically, this is the uh, offset. So we're going to normalize it. Go from the the other thing we're going to need is the pickups. We're going to get that. It'll just be our parents transform. That'll be easy. And how do you get the parent? Oh, wrong one. There we go. So we're going to go to the pickup position plus this offset that was already normalized. I think I want to move it to really happy with the way it looked here. Got to estimate how far apart these items are. All right, I'm going to try to move the light to the center of the cube. No, that's what I wanted. And try to move the light. All right. So I'm going to estimate that 1.3 maybe, 1.4, that distance right there. Let's do 1.5. All right, so we're going to set the transform position to be the position of the pickup plus one and a half times the normalized offset. So I really try to minimize what I'm doing down here. Uh, there's only two lines of code. I didn't want to put this in pickup because uh, maybe I want some pickups later that don't have lights. I don't need to do this crazy uh, update thing to them. All right, so let's, uh, I've already attached it and hopefully I saved everything. Let's see if that uh, light actually rotates and gets in the position I'm thinking it should be in. I feel like it's going to go crazy. Like it's going crazy. Good. Uh, I am selected on the light right here, so it's rotation zero zero zero. So looks like we're. I better turn the spotlight off if I am not having the best assessment of how this looks. All right. Here's I can see it at every angle. All right, I'm happy with the way it looks. I turned off that spotlight in play mode, so it's not going to mess this up. Great time to rotation. I think I want to go even four on this. <clears throat> if you shrink your initial move speed, you're going to need to increase your duration. Four seconds should be enough time to spring back. Obviously, there's a wall in the way. That's not going to work so well. Make it even get crazy if it sticks. All right. It'd be nice to ramp that move speed up nice and slow, but. Yeah, we won't do that. All right, so I think this is pretty good. Uh, you can, of course, now to make the level. Yeah, need to make things prefabs. 
So I think this has a prefab, so I changed it quite a bit. So I'm going to hit apply. And that should give us, yeah, model light, all that good stuff. Rollerball, I don't think this even had a prefab. But, oh, this does have a prefab, but I'm going to put a prefab right in my prefabs folder. There. I think I did something to this one. Oh yeah, there's a lot of lighting changes I made. I uh, decreased the intensity of the sun to half, uh, indirect to zero, turned the strength down, and then I came over to lighting, and like I said, I changed off the background. I don't have a sun source anymore. I turned the intensity multiplier to zero, so I don't get any ambient um, lighting in here. Probably could go with none, but it's not an option. I think anything else I just left. Yep. That was basically it. I think I changed it to a warmer color so it had a little more brownish look to it. Alright, so you want. Oh, we don't. The end zone does not. You can see right here there's no third bar right there that says, you know, prefab and whatnot. So we're going to need to definitely make an end zone prefab. Alright. So you can drag in a bunch of. Close all this stuff up. Alright, directional light. I. Happy to put this into all that walls. All right, so here's a great time for organizing. So I'm going to put wall directional light inside the level. I don't know if I want to put end zone and level or pickups. I'm going to go pickups right here. We look camera rig, the event system, and the canvas. I want to package all that together. Place helpers. There are things I'm not going to edit that much. Uh, maybe it, it we'll edit the canvas quite a bit at some point later in time. We're not going to do it right now. All right, this looks a lot nicer to me. Chop the stuff I will really want to focus on at the bottom here. I don't know if I look at helpers much. All right, so I think I can navigate this a lot more quickly now. Okay. All right, so duplicate a bunch of these. Drag them around. Level one right there. I lost the light. Oop, something went wrong. I didn't lose the light. I think this light's activated. There's a limit to how many lights they'll let you kind of show at one time. Here, I think in the game view, that's a different story. Ooh, that's horrible. Oh, <laughs> That's a division by zero error, something like that. All right, so that's a math error I'll fix and then put a add something in here. That's a horrible thing to look at. All right, it is pretty from a distance, though. 